tell you about this. Good morning, high performance computing fans, and welcome back to Atlanta, Georgia. We're here kicking off day two of our three days of coverage of Supercomputing 2024 here for theCUBE. Mm -hmm. My name is Savannah Peterson. So excited for this next panel with these fabulous guests, Jess, Gita, and Jonathan. Thank you so much for taking the time to hang out. I'm not going to lie, we're not supposed to play favorites, but I was very excited about this panel in particular because we're not only talking about making AI real and bridging the gap between research and real lives, we're also talking about saving yeah. lives, which is really special. Jonathan, I'm going to turn it to you a little bit because I know you're a big fan of the women on this side I of the table. <laughs> Talk to me a bit about this partnership and lay the land for us. Yeah, so we, we've had a Fantastic partnership for the last three years between Dell and Memorial Sloan Kettering, um, really helping Azweka re reimagine the infrastructure that these these teams are building, and we're, we're starting to see this as a, a pattern in many 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 different places around the world, where people have an appetite to to build you know factories for data, where they're taking structured data, unstructured data, synthetic data. And through these new new machines, through AI, transform them into intelligence in the form of insights and tokens. And this is this is an amazing story that I'm super excited to explore with everybody. When we were chatting before we went live, you described Jess as a maverick. Yeah. Which I love. And he does so very adoringly. And you told me, which I concur with, that it takes a special person within these organizations to push forward the research, to push forward the collaboration. Jess. When did you get the idea to start this project and pull in these partners and find the tools to help ex expedite research and time to discovery like you have? I would say I have to give all the kudos to our chief architect, Lohit Valeru. He really found the partnerships and advocated for them. And I lean into our technical SMEs who really bring the, the, the technical brilliance to the table. And I enable them to make those types of architectural decisions. And he has done a phenomenal job choosing our partners. As um, just yesterday, we were announced number four on the IO 500 in partnership with Dell and Weka. So that's really exciting news that's for us. That's a big us. deal. For sure, for sure. So I, I can't lay claim to the uh, uh, choosing our partners. I would definitely leave it all in the hands of our architects and our chief architect, Lohit, who came up with the brilliant mindset of uh, these are the folks we're going to go with. In terms of the new data center, which is dedicated to research at Memorial Sloan Kettering, we are building out our newest supercomputer, uh, which is called IRIS, and it's called the Cluster of Discovery. It's dedicated for research at MSK. Um, we're seeing varied workloads on there, but uh, realistically, the infrastructure that we have now has reduced our wall clock time by 30 times to be able to enable our researchers to get their work done faster. Um, so, okay, so that's a huge number, and I just want to make yeah. sure we unpack that a little bit in case the audience isn't familiar what the world clock means. Wait, but, but to break that down, explain this to me like I'm five. Yeah, so essentially what would have taken years is taking months. What would have taken months is taking weeks. What it's it. Keep going down the line, right? What was taking hours is taking minutes and minutes is taking seconds. And obviously in the research realm, it's not first to publication anymore. It's first to discovery. And at MSK, we're dedicated to ending cancer for life and having our researchers being able to leverage the most cutting edge technology and staying ahead of the game on that front really empowers them to be able to do what they do best and be in the best position possible to do the best science possible. So um, I'd love to share this, this metric here, but we had one of our postdocs on our cluster and he was able to obtain his doctorate a year in advance because of the performance that the cluster was offering to him. A which full is, year. A full year. So now when we're looking at that in terms of research, we now have a full doctorate working on research and now he can dedicate his time to new therapies, new treatments, drug discovery, vaccinations, all of that in, in the hopes that we can cure cancer and other ailments for our patients. So that was an amazing feat. It was something unlike that we've ever heard that they can achieve that in a year early was wild. Yeah. And I think that that's that's an amazing point, right? Because if you think yeah, about it. Yeah, I mean, it's giving me goosebumps over here. Yeah. Kind of a little exactly. spacious. It's like, exactly. whoa, like talk about significant it's impact. Real. And this program hasn't been implemented for that long. It's not like this has been going on and we've been seeing these tiny little incremental changes or, yeah. or shift down in research time. This is a huge 25% decrease in the total time or more potentially yeah. that it takes to 
Yeah, definitely. And you start you start to kind of gross that up to the I don't know tens of millions, hundreds of millions of PhDs that are going on in cancer research around the world. And we we just like we're on, the, on the on the on the precipice of like a massive leap forward in, in, in innovation in society. And I, I think you know AI. A lot of people are talking about like you know terrifying robots and inspection, all these things. Yeah. But when you when you you talk to people like Jess. There is, there is in in almost every industry amazing things. So we're we're starting to to get into a world where you can think about okay, how how do we guarantee like global food safety? How do we begin to take on the challenges of like climate change and sustainability in the environment? How do we we cure cancer? That's all going to be done through people like Jess and through projects using artificial intelligence. Yeah, and leveraging partners like Dell. Yeah. This has got to be a magical one for it's you to huge. be involved with. It's huge. Just actually, I mean, meeting Jess in a flesh, she brings this energy, and I think exactly as Jonathan's saying, she, you know, she pushed it forward, and I think it takes good people to try and do good things. And this is so personal. I mean, I also feel the boost father's it's too. <laughs> as human beings, we're all affected by things like this, and what you and the team have done, Jess, is phenomenal. I mean... But Dell, human progress is a big part of how we think about our portfolio, building out the right infrastructure, really trying to support our partners in getting to these kinds of groundbreaking, um, you know, outcomes, PhDs and just the research. So I think the personal element is what does it for me. And it's so well aligned to our priorities. And when it comes to fruition and you kind of see that outcome where it all comes together, it's a little bit magical. You know, it's like the, the play came together and it's like, wow, okay, oh, like, totally. that's where it is. I think I'm just going to have goosebumps the whole thing. Um, <laughs> I, I just have realized I can't control it, which yeah, is great, which is, crazy. which is magical. But I, I love what you just said, Gita. It, I, it's so personal. And, and sometimes the broader conversation around AI and even high performance computing can be very sterile, robotic, right. GPU driven. Right, right. We're talking right. about specs, which not that that isn't interesting and not that that's not powering these huge clusters and powering Iris, but on the flip side, none of this matters if it's not changing lives and exactly. making the world better exactly. for all of us. So exactly. sorry, nerd fam, but that's that's just the reality. Or the how? Let's talk a little bit more about the specific types of research that are possible on this. We're talking about billions of data points, potentially millions and billions of data points that you have to connect. What types of projects are folks using IRIS for? Or are these research using IRIS for? Yeah, so we have varied workloads from integrative genomics, uh, computational biology, computational oncologists, radiologists, pathologists. And one of the really great use cases that we've seen on IRIS thus far is we have a basic science lab that is working to identify metastasized cancers and where they may have started. And that's scaling all the way up to sharing that information with the clinicians to say, this may be a, a starting point have for the cancer. And that help, helps them with their treatment plans for those patients. And I think one of the things about uh, the groundbreaking work that's being done is, I, I don't know that I've met someone that hasn't been indirectly or directly affected by cancer. So it's oftentimes something that a mission that many of us hold dear and we want to push across the finish line to ultimately find those cures. But what they're doing on the cluster is, is unheard of. The things that they're able to accomplish in less time, which really does truly mean for our patients, they're getting the best care possible that they could. Um, yeah, so that's, that's really exciting. Special. Yeah, the AI workload investment for MSK it makes it makes so much sense. We we were chatting before we went live. AI isn't going to replace anyone in healthcare. Mm -hmm. No, it's only going to make their jobs better, more personalized. I would assume patient care will be better. Yeah, hopefully folks in the hospital for less time. What what do you say when you encounter a doomer? Because you were kind of alluding to it, Jonathan. When, when you allude, when someone's worried about what AI might do in these industries, particularly where right. life is right. is at stake, what, what's your answer to that uh, that myth that myth of doubt? I should say. I don't know. We've been through this pattern a few times over the last few decades. So yeah, we've you know, had a couple you, hype you, curves. You, yeah. I think kind of 1994 was kind of the same thing with the internet, right? It was going to change change the world. It was going to like take everybody's jobs away. It's it's very very hard when these like massive innovations are, are happening to really predict what the future is going to look like but I, I'm always I'm an optimist and um, so I, I would always lean into you know you think about the internet back in 1994 that our concept of the internet was your 14.4 modem dialing to the bulletin board service it's very hard to kind of leap forward 30 years and think that you can walk around with a, a rec plastic rectangle in your pocket with the, the some of the world's knowledge on it that's kind of where AI is right now. We are very, very, very early in the journey. Yeah. But, but it is it is going to transform every walk of life. And and save them. I mean, with the thing. I mean, because we're talking about cancer specifically, 
you know, when, when people are in, this hits me very personally, when you're, when you're in a trial or when you're in something and you have a very unique type of cancer or trying on a new drug, when we're talking about research, this could accelerate that discovery. I mean, by 10 to 30% I have in my notes here, that, that is massive. Yeah. A lot of times Big numbers, yeah. folks are, are, are stuck in a position where they're waiting to hear what might happen from X trial or X research. And now, you know, but, uh, this could potentially be, be happening yeah. very, very yeah. quickly. And t 10 or 30% would be great, but it's actually 10 or 30 times. Right, Ooh, yeah, gosh, that's what I meant to say. Holy moly, I mean, and that's, that's nuts. Yeah, that's, that's orders of magnitude yeah. faster. Um, oh man, it's just gonna unlock so much potential you mentioned the the PhD getting done a year in advance, which is nuts. How replicable do you think that is? Do you think we'll start to see that across the board? Yeah, I think our environment is extremely scalable. It's simplified for the users. We have our scientific computing team that works directly with our, our PIs and their labs to understand their science, kind of bridge that gap between science and technology and really help them with their workloads. Um, it, I, Ultimately, it's definitely replicable, right? We're already seeing it in reductions of, of patient uh, treatment, or excuse me, their recovery times, the treatments are enhanced. It's just all around been a positive for them to have access to these clusters. And I forgot to mention that we did have a PI that recently had 100 success rate on one of their cancer treatments, which was a new clinical trial for a it, it was colon cancer. It's uh, pretty much it was a death sentence previously. They had a hundred percent success rate, and they did a lot of their research on our clusters. So amazing! It's really changing the world. It's changing lives, and they're doing the best that they can to to meet those goals for the greater good of the human people yeah. and, and for MSK. Yeah. So absolutely, yeah. Yeah, and, and that's I mean, another another chills moment. <laughs> 100%. That's nuts. This yeah. wasn't happening at this velocity for those not familiar with cancer research. This stuff takes decades a lot of time. For sure. And and is complex and isn't always as, I don't want to say fail-proof, but as consistent as what you're yeah. describing. Yeah. From a partnership perspective, you mentioned that it's been three years that you've been collaborating with these lovely humans. Yeah. What, is yeah. it, what does it mean for you to be working with Dell and, and with MSK on this? Uh, is uh, what does that look like? How often are you collaborating? How often are you communicating? We we we're communicating <laughs> every. I was say, every, Jonathan, all he time. twerks a little bit or, when he sees my number on the phone. Yeah. Just <laughs> calling again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But no, we, we. I think it's largely in part because of our partnership between all of us that we've been able to be where we are. If Weka and Dell hadn't stepped up to aid us and get us everything we needed from an infrastructure perspective, I don't think that we would have made the IO five hundred yeah. or those other items. Yeah, and you, you see kind of across, across industries, people over the last year, 18 months, have started to, to realize that traditional data center infrastructure that is not fit for purpose for these type of, of new workloads. And there is definitely a kind of a, a new infrastructure triangle that's appearing. The one that gets all the headlines is the GPUs. Everyone's deploying like mm -hmm. hundreds and thousands of GPUs. Right. right. Um, with very, very fast networking on InfiniBand or Ethernet and not traditional data, you know, vertically integrated data storage, but they're trying to deal, build data pipelines, build manufacturing plants on data platforms. And that, that kind of that new technology uh, investment it is being grabbed on by the most progressive companies on the planet, and they are investing in a way that we've not seen in the last decade. You know, I think this year, this year Meta are investing $35 billion in new infrastructure. Microsoft recently announcing Fifty billion dollars in new infrastructure. Yeah, these are some serious I, figures. These, these are we have we have never seen data center investment like this. So you think this is here to stay? You think we're going to see a, a total makeover and transformation of the data center? I think there is going to be the world before 2023 and the world after 2023, and the types of data centers that are being built are very, very different. Yeah, agreed. I was just going to ask there if is, you there is we're so saying the same change. thing. I think even what you know what Jonathan was saying, like there, there's these markings in in timelines that say like there's a significant shift, like the world changes a little bit, and I think this is another one of those times. Do I think we've seen it all? No, I think we're all learning. And the comment on how often do you talk? There's so much happening. Like this event has been amazing. I'm learning something every minute. Like you turn around and there's like a nucleus of it, which is like, ah, oh, like, okay. You know, and all these other pennies drop that, or that with that, with that. And that's how you bring it back to solving real world problems. And I think 
that's the beauty of this timing that we're all looking to leverage this new technology, but it's driving, and this is what really does it for me, it's driving it for humans, like whether it's sustainability or the environment or healthcare, ultimately we're just making the world a better place. And I think that is how the technology should be. I mean, that's my personal perception that technology is not here to take over the world, it's there to make the world a better place and how you use it and how you partner is where that special source comes in. So I agree, like I, I think everything Jonathan and Jess are saying, I'm, whole, I'm nodding over here because I'm like <laughs> perfectly said, like that's exactly what's happening. And, and, and you're touching on exactly the energy for folks who aren't here in the room with the three lovely humans next to me. It's really about the collaboration. Mm -hmm. And I think, I mean, we've all been in technology. We're talking about different hype curves and different yep. trends that we've seen. I haven't seen a era in tech where we're this collaborative on actually delivering true value. I mean, of course, there's still competition in the market. We're not going to pretend like that doesn't exist. But on the flip side, I mean, even the three of you sitting on this stage, the goal here is to build things that are better for our better future, yeah. not just yeah. a better stack or a better data center. There, there's this overarching how it's going to actually change our lives because AI and HPC at this stage is an incredibly expensive investment. So yeah. it's exciting. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. So I have one more question for you all because that time just flew by. We could talk all day. <laughs> When we have you on this stage at Supercomputing next year, because this was obviously great, we're going to need an update. What do you hope to be able to say then that you can't yet say today? IO 500 number three. Love that. Call. Yeah, yeah. No hesitation from Jess on that. Oh, one. Yeah. That. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. What about you, Gita? For me, it's just more wins, exactly as Jess is describing. It's examples of where we're seeing technology used at its best, partnerships where technologies come together with the right mix that actually say, you know what? Like, I always think, well, how do I explain to my kids what I do? And I want to tell them these stories. Like, all of the benchmarks, I, I love them, don't get me wrong, I'm a technologist at heart, but when I can make it real and when it becomes personal and we're able to have conversations looking each other in the eye and saying, we're collectively, and I think this is the partnership comment that you're making. Yeah. The reason it's so easy to align is because we've all got a common goal. And then it becomes easy to say, well, I've got this piece, you've got that, that piece, and we're building the jigsaw puzzle. You know, so I think that's my goal. I just want to see more success stories, more examples, more real life value around all the technology that we're collectively building. Absolutely. How old are your kids? Um, I have a 14 year old and 11 year old. You, know, you can go ahead and give them a shout out right now. Yeah, I will. So, Amber Veda, um, Mommy over here, I will see you on Thursday night. <laughs> Wait, I also have to do mine. I have yeah. a six and a three year old, oh. so Braden and Parker. <laughs> Good to see you. Love yes. you. So now I'm curious, actually, just sitting there for a second. Don't worry, Jonathan, I won't leave you out here. That's right. Uh, how do you describe what you do to them now so we can compare next time? A lot, a lot of this. So uh, over the years, as they've grown up, my kids are a little bit older, they've started to ask more of those pointed questions of, okay, that's great, you do this, but like, what does that mean? What does that mean? And we, we have, my girls are at that sort of emotional age where they want to talk a lot and they have a lot of like lots of questions. So a lot of our evenings with very deep rooted questions. And I just keep it really honest with them. You know, they, they see their grandparents aging, they see illness in the family, they see mm -hmm. I've had surgery. I mean, you know, they see it. And day in, day out, I try and kind of remind them that actually this is real life. You know, my husband's in robotics. And again, we try and make it real for them all the time. And I just want them to be good citizens of the world. I mean, that's if I've done my job right, one day they will give back to the world and be good citizens, and that's my motivation. Oh, that just touched my soul on a whole nother level. <laughs> Y'all are the nicest ever. I'm loving this. No wonder you wanted them to come up here with you today. Exactly. I, I see what's going on. How do you talk to your kids about it? Oh, wow. They, I think they're still at an age where yeah. it's just, what is mommy bringing home from the trip that she's going on? So brilliant. I'm on a severe swag hunt after this. Oh, no, it's taking for a nice so, Yeah, I, I've told them, you know, whatever makes them happy, but mommy's only paying for college if it's technology. So. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have to, whatever brings them joy, honestly. But um, I think they know that I work for a hospital. They're very proud. And my six-year-old gave me the thumbs up on my outfit for today, so. You look yeah, great. I'm not yeah. surprised. Yeah. The six-year-old has great taste, it's so you, clearly, that's that's for sure. Jonathan, what about you? What do you hope to be able to say this time next year? So I think that this show has been a, a great example of the, the change that we're seeing. So the, the canaries in the coal mine the last few years have been companies like MSK that mm -hmm. have grabbed hold of this technology and done something In a good way. Sometimes different. the canary in the coal mine is, yeah. is, is a yes. Yeah, uh, the, the good the canaries. Early, indi <laughs> the early indicators of a yeah, like, yeah, yeah. sea change. The, this show, large enterprises are absolutely ready for, for AI. And that that's really been the discussion this week is that no longer it's going to be the Mavericks, 
is AI is that wave is about to hit the large enterprise. Mm -hmm. And so I would expect when we come back next year, you're going to see a plethora of organizations that are doing amazing things by MSK. Mm -hmm. I love that. And, and more research done faster, more cures found quicker, so, yeah. and more lives saved. Jonathan, Jess, Gita, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you so much. My yeah, heart is today. full, which I cannot always say <laughs> is the case after every one of these. I'm inspired. I hope you're all inspired wherever you might be watching. We're here in Atlanta, Georgia at Supercomputing 2024. My name's Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news.